morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. You know, whatever it is, totally forgot. And then I saw like an ad with me in it. It's like, Met Stadium, what's happening? And then I reached out to Will, he's like, I have no idea what that is. Then I reached out to the Wall Street Journal who is running the panel. And they're like, oh yeah, there's gonna be a thousand people there and you're leading this pa panel talking about you know the billionaire mindset in the real estate industry and i'm like what time am i doing this tomorrow morning it's like me okay i got to what i'm doing now you ready ready business plan that is popular in 2023 is layoffs. If you can't grow revenue, then you can still hold on to margins by removing expenses. And your number one expense for most company ends up being people. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Okay, bye, bye. Uh, I have a conference call that started three minutes ago. So yeah, hold on, I gotta jump on this call. 10.30 Zoom call. Hi, Jen. Ready? Ready. 12 p.m. soon. I do like 100 games a day. I mean, listen. It's easy for me to sit here and say, don't make your own food, have your food delivered to you, buy back your time. I could not have done that 15 years ago when I had $40. But as you start to make an income, you start to think about, okay, my greatest asset is my time. I don't live in the days. I don't even live in the hours, I live in the minutes. So what am I gonna do with every single minute? And every minute needs to be absolutely worth it. It doesn't mean you have to be super productive, high functioning all the time, hustle, 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 hustle. And I follow calendar, which can be confusing sometimes. So like this is calendar today, but we have a developer meeting up here at Spark North. And then all of my time is used wisely. Today there's Zoom culture, right? So in the car now, instead of just doing conference calls, I can do conference calls and I can do Zooms. Like I have a Zoom in two minutes for 15 minutes. So now I'm jumping onto another conference. Well, I guess this is Zoom right now. Then I go into that meeting and then it's Zoom, 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 Zoom. And that takes us to 3 p.m. And then it's just a complete shit show after that. Right now it's 12.44 on May 10th. Look at your calendar right now. Let me know what you had done up until this point on May 10th. Or it would just be interesting for me to know. Do it. And by then, hopefully, you're able to have gotten us to Central Park North, right? You have seatbelt? We all have seatbelts. Okay, just go easy, go easy, go easy, go easy. All right, we're gonna leave here by 12.45 if I'm gonna make it in time. Why are these developer meetings just like updates on the building? Yeah, they're updates on the building, talk about sales, strategy, pricing, go through deals, figure out the next steps, future, you know. Now we go back down too. So, oh, there's an event here, but I can't. So I got Zooms in the car. So you see my calendar, we're going through it, and you're probably wondering, like, dude, how are you not getting burnt out? You know, we talk about it a lot, you know, in terms of scheduling your priorities and not prioritizing your schedule. And you can be busy, 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 but actually get nowhere and you're stuck in a hamster wheel even though you think you're doing so much. And then you can be really, really busy, but you're actually propelling your life forward. Burnout has a lot less to do with what you're actually doing and a lot more to do with how you feel about what you're doing. So I could be doing what I do today all day, every day and sustain it at a pace forever. These are 12 to 14 hour work days, and it's been the same since 2008. It's 15 years at the same pace, and it actually just gets crazier and crazier. 
Shouldn't I have experienced burnout already? Shouldn't I be burnt out right now? I should be dead right now, according to the way people talk about and feel burnout. As much as I might complain about certain things and, oh, I don't want to do that. I enjoy the build process and I enjoy growing. And burnout comes from doing the same thing over and over that you don't actually enjoy doing. Of course, you're going to get burnt out. As long as you can wake up and be excited, maybe not about what you're doing, but about the end result. Like, I'm not saying you should go flip burgers, but I'm also saying, why not do that stuff? If you don't have another option, there's not another something on the horizon, and you don't think you get another job for the next two months, why not? Like, what's stopping you? You think you're better than that? You don't have a job. So will you get burnt out from that? Sure, could you do it for 10 years? Of course. There are absolutely people who've done it for 10 years because they know what the end game is for them. Steady paycheck, nearly impossible to replace them, and they know they're doing it for their family or relatives back home, and they have a higher calling. Would they be doing something else if they could? Sure, they need to, probably not. Even when you're not busy, all you want to do is be busy. And when you're incredibly busy, all you want to do is have time off. The grass is always greener on the other side. It's like when I'm not stressed, I actually feel lonely. Anxiety and stress are, are either your enemy and you fight against them all day long, or they're your buddy and you use them and you say, hey, hey anxiety, hey stress, thanks for showing up. You're there because evolution told you to be here which means I'm on the lookout for what's about to happen. Thanks for reminding me. When that buddy's not there, now nah, I'm just alone. I think that's the way you know I've been conditioned at this point. That's why I put myself in such ridiculous situations. And I'm more afraid of analysis paralysis than I am of almost anything else. Speed to lead has been ingrained in my brain. I think probably because I'm a salesperson, but everyone's a salesperson. Now it's time for content. I feel like my whole life is content. It is, but you, you've done that to yourself. Casey, nice dad, texted me. Your social game is unmatched. So much noise and bullshit everywhere and you seemingly stand alone and branching from your core audience and appeal without straying thematically. Very impressive. You're a masterclass in new media marketing, a generation ahead of everyone else in the space. Commercial real estate isn't about what you see, it's about who sees, shut the f Okay, ready? Okay, so how long is this video so I know? 60 seconds. How much do you think my office building in the center of Soho cost me? Hint, it's more than you think, and here's why. See where we are on this intersection? Every day for three hours, you have non-stop traffic. No one can move, the honking is completely easy. See, it's because here's the deal. In commercial real estate, it's not about what you see, it's about who sees you. Look at all these people, this way. They're backed up this way, they're backed up this way for hours on hours on hours a day. Okay, now it's 4 p 5 p.m. actually. I got two minutes and in two minutes I have to do a conference call, then I have another conference call, then I have a Zoom, and then I have a meeting, and then I have a conference call, and then another conference call. And then I go into a team dinner. So right now we're gonna do a quick question, Q&A, back to fire, let's go. What's the most unusual or hilarious appointment that you've accidentally scheduled? Things pop up random all the time that like people get by Will, my executive assistant, all the time. One time, I, you know, all of a sudden on my calendar, I'm like, what is the Italian ukulele group? And I went into our third floor conference room and there's like the six Italian guys with ukuleles singing. And apparently it was some company that they were doing, it was a way they were doing something. And I was like, I have no idea what the fuck is going on. Why am I here right now? What's the funniest excuse you've ever used for canceling an appointment? The funniest excuse I've ever used for canceling an appointment, an appointment is, uh, sorry, my grandmother's on fire. We will have to reschedule. Do you have a secret panic button for when you're feeling overwhelmed by your schedule? Listen, the easiest thing I can do when I feel all overwhelmed about this and schedule is to throw this out, remove it. The schedule goes away pretty quickly when you turn your phone off and you put it in a drawer, you lock the key and you throw away the key. How many times have you done that? I've never, I've never done that. Does my calendar ever get crazy? Yeah, but you know what the good thing about time is? It never stops. No matter what I'm doing, where I'm like, oh God, I can't wait for this to be, eventually it's over and you move through it. As long as you're doing the work to get you to an end game. Number one piece of advice for someone looking to stay busy. If you want to stay busy, stay motivated, stay proactive, you have to create the work. I'm selling apartments, condos, townhouses, single family homes, buildings, whatever it might be. You have to create the market. As long as you stay on top of things, keep track of what you want to do, keep track of your follow-up, and then calendar your priorities. Do not 
priorities your calendar. So that's it. These days in the life are fun. Good thing there was a lot going on today. Otherwise, you guys would have been bored, but there's a lot going on all the time. If you like these types of things, let me know in the comments because there are a lot of work and like, you know, I don't know. And if you do like it, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. The YouTube algorithm loves that. And because of that, you know I love you. So smash the like button. I love you more, Ryan Sirhan.